Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Jay and we haven't spent any time together in the kitchen for some time now. It is January, it's 2023, happy new year. I've been on a bit of a journey with this whole organic um, food situation that I've been talking about and I have kind of taken a step back from making food content and I have been trying to kind of convert my kitchen and my pantry to an organic kitchen and pantry and so I've done a full clean out of fridge freezer on um, my pantry and I have been slowly replacing those products with organic products so I've done enough of that now that I feel good about getting back into the kitchen so I have a recipe for you today um, that is easy to make organic. I'm not going to say that it is an organic recipe because that is really dependent on the ingredients that you're using, but um, this is one that you can easily find organic ingredients for. Um, it's also a really good recipe for the pantry challenge. Um, the Three Rivers Homestead Pantry Challenge is going on right now. I'm not totally participating because um, it takes years to create a working pantry and I'm not quite there yet. 2023 is my second year homesteading and although I've made a lot of progress, I cannot rely solely on my pantry. So I will still be grocery shopping. However, I am trying to find ways to use up what I have in my home and only purchase things from the store that I need like dairy and, and things like that. Um, so th the reason that I'm showing you this recipe is because I have a sweet tooth. It's usually candy um, to kind of appease that sweet tooth but none of that is organic, nor is it very healthy. So I was trying to find something that I could swap out to appease my sweet tooth that A, I can make organic, and B, is kind of a healthier alternative. And I ended up finding um, breakfast cookies from Sally's Baking Addiction. I've talked about Sally's Baking Addiction, her website on my channel in the past. I love that website. I love her recipes. I make a lot of them. I'll post the link down in the description for this recipe. And while you're there looking at this one, check out some of her other recipes as well. It's a great, great resource. So these breakfast cookies are wonderful um, to be made organically and also for the pantry challenge because you can kind of make them however you wanna make them. You can swap a lot of things out and make a lot of substitutions and make them exactly what you want them to be. So for the base, we have um, oats, rolled oats. And I wanted to show you guys, um, you may have seen my Azure uh, organic shopping video. And so I have my rolled, my organic rolled oats that I purchased from Azure. And here I have them in a two uh, gallon food grade plastic bucket with a gamma seal lid. Gamma seal lids are great because I have very weak wrists and actually I've been having a lot of issues with my left wrist. And so very, very easy to screw on and off. And um, it's not like one of those plastic lids that you have to literally like peel off. And so these are really excellent. And I talked about those in that video. So I just kept, I have a smaller container of them that I actually keep in my kitchen and not, this is kept in my pantry, but I just wanted to show you this. You have one mixing bowl and you're going to add two cups of rolled oats or quick oats, whatever oats you have. After that, you have some sort of nut butter. You can use, I'm gonna use almond butter because that's actually all I have in the house right now. I don't even really like almond butter that much, but I got this for free from Thrive Market and it needs to get used. So I'm gonna use um, almond butter, but you can use peanut butter, almond butter, sunflower seed butter, whatever butter you guys like to use in your household is what you'll want to use for this recipe. And you're actually going to use one cup of whatever butter it is you choose to use. My oven just beeped, letting me know that it's preheated. I preheated it to 325 degrees. We're gonna add our one cup of nut butter to our oats. Next up, you want some kind of fruit butter. So the recipe says apple butter, but I have salted caramel pear butter that I'm trying to go through, so that's what I'm going to use. You can also swap out applesauce. Also, if you're interested in making this, check out the comments on her recipe because a bunch of people talked about really excellent substitutions that they made that worked for them that they've already tried and then commented about. So if you're looking for substitutions, you can always check out the comments of recipes. I learn a lot by doing that. Now, you're supposed to add one third a cup of whatever butter you choose. However, 
The next ingredient is a one whole mashed banana. I don't have any bananas and I, because of the pantry challenge, I'm not interested in going to the store for a banana. So I'm not going to include it in the recipe. I've never made this recipe before. So not including the banana, I don't know what that's going to do to the consistency or texture of this breakfast cookie. So to try and make up for the loss of volume, I'm going to add my entire jar of pear butter to see if maybe that'll make up for it because I feel like I feel like a thick fruit butter is it's a little thinner than a mashed banana, but I don't know. We're gonna try it and see what happens. And that's all in the spirit of doing a pantry challenge or, or just even if you're not doing a challenge, cause I'm not really doing the challenge, but just to have the intention of using what you have in your pantry, sometimes you have to get a little creative. So we'll see together at the end if not using the banana is acceptable or not. So I've got my oats, my nut butter, my fruit butter. Like I just said, I'm not going to be adding the mashed banana. However, if you have it, you should add it. So it's one banana mashed, add it into the same bowl. After that, you're going to add a fourth a cup of, the recipe says maple syrup. I don't ever add maple syrup to anything because to be honest with you, I can't afford the good maple syrup and I'm not going to use the fake stuff. So to me, the obvious substitution is always honey. I have a dream of someday having maple trees and making my own maple syrup. I just think that is so dreamy. I can't even, ugh, to live a life where you can make your own maple syrup, that is incredible. But in the meantime, I'm just going to use my local honey because buying real ma maple syrup at the store is so expensive, oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna add this honey into the same bowl. This is a one bowl recipe. I love recipes that are one bowl recipes. By the way, I've heard a lot of people say that the trick to getting sticky stuff out of measuring cups is to spray it with nonstick cooking spray. I don't use nonstick cooking spray, so I always like to have one of these silicone spatulas and I just scoop it out and it comes out pretty clean. I don't really have too much of an issue doing it that way. I'd much prefer that. So those are your main ingredients. Those are the ones that you really should include or find some kind of suitable substitution for. From here, it's all preference. What do you want this cookie to look like? What theme are you going with? You could do sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. You could do any kind of nut, chocolate chips, cranberries, raisins. There's no end to what you could put into this cookie. For me, again, I'm trying to appease a sweet tooth. That's really the goal of this cookie. I'm going to eat it after breakfast and these are called breakfast cookies, but please, you can eat them absolutely any time of the day or night. Um, it just so happens that my sweet tooth is the worst in the morning for some reason. I feel like that's so strange. So I'm going to add some cinnamon. You could also add pumpkin pie spice, nutmeg, uh, cloves. What's the matter, baby? What was that? The cats are playing. So naturally, Benny, being an Australian Shepherd, that herding instinct, he hates it when the cats play. So I try to let him outside so that they can have some time to get some of that energy out. So I've got cinnamon. I'm going to add some chocolate chips because, again, I want to appease that sweet tooth. Also, I just want to point out that I bought semi-sweet chocolate chips organic from Azure Standard and I put them in this darling little container. Look at how romantic that is to just come in, scoop out some organic chocolate chips and add them to my baking recipe. I absolutely love that. And it brings up the fact that you can definitely like give your life whatever vibe you want it to have. Add a little romanticism in your life. Make your life feel like a movie. And for me, reaching into a jar and grabbing some chocolate chips is so cute. I just love that. So we've got some chocolate chips in there. Back to the spirit of using what's in your pantry. I love having nuts in my baked goods. All I have left are some chopped pecans. Um, and actually, they're not expired. That is impressive. But they're pretty big pieces. Uh, let's see if I can show you. They're not very small pieces. And I want kind of small pieces for these cookies. My food processor experienced a very unfortunate mishap and is no longer with us. So I have to go back to using my ancient <laughs> Black & Decker food chopper. Look at how old this thing is, but it's clean and it works. So I'm gonna chop up these pecans to be um, smaller pieces that I will enjoy in these cookies. 
This is definitely more the size that I was looking for to have a nut in my cookie. That's really nice. That's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this right into our bowl. And lastly, I'm gonna add just a dash of salt. Maybe a pretty hefty dash of salt because with all the sweetness that I have going on in here, to cut through that with some salt, I think actually would be delicious. So I'm gonna add a good bit of salt there. And then you can use a stand mixer, hand mixer. I don't feel like getting any of that out. One of the things I love about this recipe is the simplicity. So I'm just going to use my spatula that I had out anyway, and I'm gonna get this all nice and mixed together here. Yeah, I definitely learned about myself um, that I am a peanut butter girl. I got that free almond butter and I have the same snack at work every day. It's um, apple slices and peanut butter. That's what I eat around, what I, I eat it around two o'clock when I'm at work. And uh, I, I put, uh, I ran, I don't have any peanut butter in the house. I ran out of peanut butter. So I packed apples and almond butter and I hated it. I ate it, I ate it, but I did not like it. <laughs> and I realized, you know, sometimes it can be so hard to shake that preconceived idea that you have of something. And so the fact that it was so different from peanut butter made me dislike it. And I think that's what's so hard for people to get past when they start cooking from scratch or making a lot of their own products that they buy from the grocery store. It's so different than what they're accustomed to that they don't like it. It's hard for them to get past how different it is. Um, and I actually, I'm very gentle with Tom because of that when it comes to him trying stuff because I understand it can be difficult to get past the fact that it's, it's different. It's not what you're used to. And so, you know, just keep that in mind if you do, um, you know, follow along with my advice and try to get more organic products in your house and cook more from scratch and things like that. It's not necessarily gonna be exactly the same as what you're used to and that's a good thing. That's a good thing because the things that you buy from the store are the way that they are because of all of the additives. So when you cut all of that out and you've got a raw natural product, it's gonna be a little different and that's a good thing, but it can be hard to get past. So this is all nice and mixed together. Here I have a baking sheet with one of my unbleached parchment papers that I got from Thrive Market and I absolutely love these things. They look at, I've already baked cookies on this twice and it's in such great shape still. So I've been reusing these same ones because they're just in such great shape still. So I'm going to, I'm gonna use my 1 4th measuring cup to scoop out some of this cookie dough and kind of, yeah, oh that's nice. And just get them on my baking sheet. You don't have to make them this big. And honestly, when I eat them, I'll probably only eat half of one at a time, but this is easy to do right now, so this is what I'm gonna do. Remember that I did not include the banana, and I think the banana really would have helped um, because there's a lot of, we added a lot of liquid. Really, the only thing that we had in here that could give this any kind of real structure were the oats. So I think having the banana really would be very helpful, but I just don't have it. So we're going to just do what we can do. I also love this recipe because there is no processed sugar in this recipe. We did not add any sugar. Although I have been using organic sugar and that's wonderful, the fact that we used honey as the sweetener I think is really fantastic. So we're going to take our spatula that we use to mix everything together and we're just gonna kind of flatten these out a little bit because they likely won't do that like a regular cookie would when we put them in the oven. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten all of these out a little bit. Your dough is gonna be very sticky and that is to be expected. She even says that in her recipe, um, even with the banana added in there, it's gonna be a very sticky dough. Okay, so I put these into my 325 degree preheated oven for about 15 minutes. My oven run, runs hot, so if yours does not, they may need to be put in longer. The recipe actually says 16 to 19 minutes, but I know my oven, so I did 15. The first batch are a no-go because I was helping Tom with something and they are 
beyond saving, even by my standards. And I eat burnt things all the time. <laughs> so they're getting pitched. But these ones turned out really nice. So let's go ahead and taste one of these. This is what we're working with. And that, I like how nice and thick it is. That's definitely why we needed to take the spatula and flatten them out. Of course, there's a piece of dog hair because when is there not? They are a little crumbly and I think that's to be expected because the only dry ingredient that was in this were the oats, but that's fine. Going into it knowing that is okay. Mm. Oh yeah, these are definitely gonna do exactly what I want them to do which is appease my sweet tooth with something that is healthier and can be made organic versus a Twix bar or a Kit Kat. I was a little worried because I made them with the almond butter and I don't like almond butter. And although I can taste it, it's really fine because there's such a balance. There's so many other flavors. I can taste the honey. I obviously can taste the chocolate chips really well. I can taste the cinnamon. The almond butter actually complements those things really well. I do think I would have added a little bit more salt because I, I love the balance of sweet and salty. Um, that's my personal preference. So I think I, next time I can add even a little bit more salt. So these can be frozen and they can be kept in the freezer for up to three months. So I wanted to make a double batch of them um, but I didn't really have enough um, nuts and I didn't have the banana. So I didn't necessarily want to make a double batch until I knew they were going to turn out okay. And they definitely did even without having the banana. Um, so in the future I'll make a double batch, keep them in the freezer. And then the author of the recipe actually said in the notes that they're really good to eat frozen right out of the freezer. And I think I would, knowing myself, really like that. So that's likely what I'm going to do with these. Keep them in the freezer after I've had breakfast, break a piece off and enjoy it to appease my sweet tooth. So again, I'll have the recipe linked down in the description for you if you're interested in giving these a try. They're great for the pantry challenge because you can kind of swap in and out whatever you have, whatever you're trying to use. And you can use up a few things on your pantry like the fruit butter that we talked about. And they're also great because you do have the opportunity to make them organic or at least mostly organic if that's something that you're trying to implement in your kitchen. So you guys, I really appreciate you hanging out with me today while we made these cookies. Let me know down in the comments if this is something you're going to try in your kitchen. And I'm really excited that we finally did get back into the kitchen together. I really love doing these videos and I'm hoping that I'll have more of them for you um, in the very near future. So have a wonderful day and be blessed my friends. Bye.